All right, story time. You want story time? This is real. Uh, one year for Christmas, my brother got me a gift, and the gift was clearly a basket that was all wrapped in wrapping paper with a bow on it. And I opened it, and in this basket was a bottle of lotion and the Silence of the Lambs DVD. <laughs> I love my brother. Silence. Of the Lambs. So Silence of the Lambs, well, first of all, it's one of those movies where if I did a video on Silence of the Lambs, I would want it to be this big psychological deep dive, like the greatest video I've ever done. And then I realized it's probably not going to be, and I'm going to have to be cool with that. So in a world where in talking about movies, you can talk about how a movie is and how a movie feels. I usually go with how a movie feels. So I'll just tell you what I'd like about Silence of the Lambs. It's as simple as that. So Silence of the Lambs came out in 1991. I remember my 10 year old self was like, ooh, that movie looks creepy. And now my very adult grown up self was like, yeah, that movie is creepy. And what isn't there to like about Silence of the Lambs? Just look at it from the get go. You have a relatable underdog protagonist that you instantly latch on to when you're rooting for. The stakes are high. You know they have to find this person who's been kidnapped. And if they don't, that person's gonna meet this very grisly end that they've told you about earlier on with pictures and everything it's, it's it'll be bad also they gotta find the creepy ass motherfucker who took her because dude in terms of i'll talk about buffalo bill later but yeah creepy that's just a word he is an experience and you have this other monster who's this polite guy i mean i suppose i should talk about clary starling first because she is the protagonist but since i'm on the subject let's talk about hannibal lecter for a second this movie flipped the script for me when I first saw it. Cause usually it's like you have monsters and you have good guys and FBI finds the monsters and that's that. But now enter Hannibal Lecter who at this point has been in cinema for decades. So it's not new, but at the time, at least for me in my perspective, it was. Not that there hadn't been great villains in movies before this or even villains worth rooting for, but this balance between monster and gentleman, I hadn't seen, not to this degree. Not to this kind of degree that felt this real. He's one of the great villains in cinematic history. What makes him that? Well, we root for him. <laughs> it's, we do, I do every time to my detriment, every time I watch Silence of the Lambs, I'm always rooting for Hannibal Lecter. But this movie sets me up and sets you up to do just that and it's actually really brilliantly done. You hear about Hannibal Lecter early on in this movie. You heard about the heinous, horrific things he's done. You know he's Hannibal the cannibal. You know he eats people. Then when Clarice is on her way to meet him and interview him for the first time, you start hearing these stories about how some nurse removed his restraints. He bit her face. It, it, it's, he sounds like a monster. She's on this long walk down to this underground dungeon cell. You're like, this guy's gonna look like Killer Croc or some shit. Uh, uh, what? What is this polite gentleman guy? Good morning. It's like the information you heard about how monstrous this person is and this seemingly polite, well-mannered person you see before you, you can't reconcile that. It's like the state of cognitive dissonance that just hits your brain. You're like, I, I don't know what to say. So until he's an asshole to Clary Starling, I'll, benefit of the doubt and he just he never is he's never a dick to clarice in fact in his own way he defends her against multiple migs his big thing is he just does not like rude people and i mean we've worked customer service before who doesn't hate dicks and now there's this hannibal lecter who also hates douchebags that's fine and from there he's got you it's just the movie just sets you up for that it's amazing and then he starts talking with her and then the alarm bells start going off you're like oh okay i got you so he is very manipulative you can tell but that's what this movie is this movie watching silence of the lambs is a state of constant alarm bells there's a very predator versus prey thing going on in this movie in many situations including but not limited to situations with hannibal lecter and you're never on the winning side of that. It's a thriller movie, it's a manhunt movie, yes, but it's also, it has, it's horror. Which is what I really liked about the series because they took that concept and they went forth with it and it kept up that tradition. And then there's Buffalo Bill, the creepy lotion in the basket guy from Silence of the Lambs. What the fucking lotion in the basket? This guy is a nightmare. He's the boogeyman in the closet. 
He's the horror story in the recesses of the minds of all of us. And he's a big part of what makes Silence of the Lambs horror for me. Once in a while in a movie, there, there's that villain that just stands out as the creepiest son of a bitch of that decade. That's Buffalo Bill. He's not like Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter's like the villain rock star of Silence of the Lambs. On account of his intellect, Buffalo Bill doesn't have that going for him. Buffalo Bill just makes your skin crawl and it's as simple as that. Buffalo Bill has no code of conduct. He just has a preferred shirt size. That's what's gonna keep you from getting killed by him and that's just not enough for him not to be creepy. He's the manifestation of the thing that scared you as a kid. He's the reason the hair stands up on the back of your neck when you walk to your car in a parking lot on a dark night. Hannibal Lecter shows that monsters can be human. Buffalo Bill shows that humans can be monsters which is so much worse. But also I like Clary Starling. I like who she is. She's this underdog FBI trainee. She just goes to interview Hannibal Lecter once and she's captivated by him. Yeah, she needs his help to solve this case. And that's another thing I really loved about this movie. One of the many reasons Silence of the Lambs is one of the great manhunt movies of all time. You have this psycho, you have Hannibal Lecter who just sees it all. He knows what's going on. He knows how to read this file and be like, oh, yep, know exactly who this is. It's not just because he's smart, it's because he thinks like that. And always got the feeling this is just the most fun he's had in years, so he's gonna draw it out. He's just gonna play with him. Not just for his own amusement, not just to draw it out because it's different than his mundane ass day to day, but also just to show him who's the smartest guy in the room. But Clarice is smart, clever, and Jodie Foster was amazing in the movie. I just like the dynamics. And again, there may be a lot of elements in this movie that are familiar to other Manhunt movies, but if that movie came out after Silence of the Lambs, odds are Silence of the Lambs is a reason why. You can trace like a direct correlation of evolution between Silence of the Lambs and that other Manhunt movie that is also great. And even the end, the climax of this movie, the, the climax of this movie is anxiety wrapped in fear. This scene in the house, you can take all the anti-anxiety meds you can muster. You can take a horse tranquilizer. Your BPM's still gonna get to about 120 while watching it. Just makes your skin crawl. In the end, Silence of the Lambs, in terms of manhunt movie, it has everything. It's a, And it moves lightning fast. This is a two hour movie, never drags. It's the movie, when I was watching it this last time, when I was watching it today, I had to pee and I never left the movie. I could have paused it. It's not like we're in a movie theater. No, you just can't break that momentum. It never drags, it always moves, and it's a movie that, it was probably the first movie that made me question what are monsters? and made me realize that monsters, well, they're humans too. But Hannibal Lecter just, just being Flip the script and Anthony Hopkins crushes it. Which is great to look at Mads Mikkelsen, Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins, Hannibal Lecter executed very differently, but both those intellectual monster types that Hannibal Lecter needs to be. They're both amazing Hannibal Lecters just in their way. They don't cancel each other out and I'm glad we have both of them in this universe. It's smart drama, great thriller, amazing horror, a perfect blend of all of those genres and actually one of the three movies, you know me, I'm, I'm not one where like Oscars are the end all be all, but it's one of three movies that ever won the big five, which is best picture, director, screenplay, actor and actress. Silence of the Lambs is one of only three. Another one of those three movies is actually another favorite of mine in which I learned everything I learned about respecting authority, I learned from that film. Probably shouldn't have been the case, but it is what it is. So I'm not giving you any new information on Silence of the Lambs, but it was groundbreaking when it came out and still amazing to watch today. Silence of the Lambs is awesome-tacular. <laughs>